Hello everybody. In this brief session, I want to discuss with you the MCQ type questions asked in the second term examination by Department of Anatomy. Which of the following compartments of peritoneal cavity is closed one? Right lateral paracolic gutter, right medial paracolic gutter, left lateral paracolic gutter, right lateral paracolic gutter. B is the correct option. This MCQ has been taken from infracolic compartment of peritoneal cavity. Infracolic compartment of peritoneal cavity lies below transverse colon and it is mesentery. The boundaries of infracolic compartment are it is bounded on the right side by ascending colon, superiorly by transverse colon and it is mesentery, and on the left side by descending colon and inferiorly by sigmoid colon. This quadrangular space is divided by the root of mesentery into two compartments, right upper triangular compartment and left lower quadrangular compartment. Now if we talk about this triangular compartment, its lateral boundary is formed by medial paracolic gutter. There are four paracolic gut gutters right lateral, right medial, left medial, left lateral. Out of these compartments, right medial paracolic boundary of right upper triangular space of infracolic compartment is a closed space. Infections from this compartment cannot spread to other compartments of peritoneal cavity. Approximate weight of liver in 80 kg meal is dash dash grams. Correct option is 2000 grams. The weight of liver in an adult is about 2.5% of the body weight. So in an adult of 80 kgs, weight of liver is 2000 grams. Duodenum is supplied by artery of dash dash. Over gut, hind gut, mid gut, both A and C. This MCQ has been taken from the arterial supply of the gut tube. The arteries of the gut tube are contained within the dorsal mesentery. They arise from dorsal aorta. The arteries are ciliate trunk, which represents the artery of the foregut, superior mesentric artery, which represents the artery of the midgut, and inferior mesentric artery, which supplies hindgut. Since duodenum develops both from foregut and midgut, it is supplied by superior mesenteric artery as well as ciliate trunk. Which of the following statements is not true regarding descending thoracic aorta? It gives posterior intercostal arteries true. Superior phrenic artery supplies undersurface of diaphragm false. It gives origin to esophageal arteries true. Esophagus has got segmental blood supply. If it is upper one third is supplied by inferior thyroid arteries, middle one third is supplied by direct branches from descending thoracic aorta, which are called esophageal arteries, and its lower part is supplied by left gastric artery. So, esophageal arteries supply middle third of the esophagus is correct. Coming to the choice B, superior phrenic artery supplies under surface of the diaphragm. When we talk about diaphragm, diaphragm is supplied by superior and inferior phrenic arteries. Superior phrenic arteries arise from descending thoracic aorta. They supply the superior surface of the diaphragm, whereas inferior surface of the diaphragm is supplied by paired inferior phrenic arteries, which arise from abdominal aorta. So choice B is wrong option. Paul's statement about oblique sinus is, it is in the form of called D sac which opens inferiorly through, it is also called cardiac bursa through, it opens inferiorly in pericardial cavity through, left ventricle forms it is anterior boundary falls. It is left atrium which forms anterior boundary of the oblique sinus. To understand the anatomy of oblique sinus, let us go to this. Diagram. In this diagram, 
we have removed the pericardium. Now we have put our left hand posterior to the heart. The diaphragmatic surface of the heart rests on our palm. Former aspect of digitus touches left atrium, which forms the anterior boundary of oblique sinus. Dorsal aspect of the digitus is in contact with the pericardium, which forms the posterior boundary of oblique sinus. Our fingers are bounded on the right side by superior vena cava, right pulmonary veins, and inferior vena cava, which form the right boundary of oblique sinus. On the left side, fingers are bounded by left pulmonary veins, which form left boundary of oblique sinus. And superiorly, there is a reflection of pericardium, which limits the upward moments of digitus and inferiorly the sinus is open. Now if we take out heart out of the pericardial cavity and then observe the boundaries of oblique sinus. We don't have anterior boundary there because we have taken out the left atrium. In other words, anterior wall consisting of left atrium has been removed. Posteriorly there is pericardium. On the right side there is superior vena cava. Now heart has been taken out and we want to see the boundaries of oblique sinus within pericardium. In other words, anterior wall consists of left atrium has been removed. Posteriorly, there is pericardium. On the right side, there is superior vena cava, right pulmonary veins and inferior vena cava. On the left side, there are left pulmonary veins and inferiorly it is open in the form of a caldi sac. This caldi sac opens into pericardial cavity. Again this red arrow represents the anterior boundary of oblique sinus formed by left atrium. So the boundaries of oblique sinus are on the right side it is bounded by lines of reflection into inferior vena cava and right pulmonary veins. On the left, it is bounded only by lines of reflection onto pulmonary veins. Which is a truly intraperitoneal organ? Uterus, stomach, intestine. Ovary is the correct option. Which type of hernia occurs through inguinal triangle? Inguinal, femoral, Direct inguinal, indirect inguinal. Direct inguinal is the correct option. Inguinal triangle is also called Hasselbach's triangle. To appreciate it is boundary, let us go to the left inguinal triangle. It is bounded medially by the lateral border of left lateral erectus, inferiorly by inguinal ligament, and laterally by inferior epigastric artery. It is the direct inguinal hernia which occurs through inguinal triangle. This type of hernia occurs commonly in elderly people. Which of the following structures does not form anterior boundary of foramen of Winslow? Portal vein, free margin of lesser momentum, inferior vena cava, common bile duct. Foramen of Winslow is also called aditus to lesser momentum or epipolic foramen. It is a slit-like opening posterior to the free margin of the lesser omentum. It is bounded anteriorly by free margin of the lesser omentum, inferiorly by first part of the duodenum, superiorly by caudate lobe of liver, posteriorly by inferior vena cava. It opens into hepatorenal pouch of Morrison. In the free margin of the lesser omentum, the structures present are common bile duct on the right side and anteriorly hepatic artery anteriorly and on the left side and posterior to these two structures is portal vein. We can remember it is D stands for duct, D also stands for dextro. So duct lies anteriorly and on the right side. Arterial lies anteriorly and on the left side. 
posterior to these two structures in the free margin is portal vein. So it is said that epiploic foramen lies between the two great veins anteriorly portal vein in the free margin of the lesser omentum and posteriorly inferior vena cava. Which of the following is most important support of liver? Inferior vena cava, portal vein, hepatic artery, hepatic vein. In living, most important support of liver is intra-abdominal pressure. But in a cadaver, it is said that we cannot take out liver unless we cut inferior vena cava. So inferior vena cava forms most important support of liver in a cadaver. Which of the following is a false statement about liver? Blood flow in hepatic lobule is centripetal. Bile flow in herring canal is centrifugal. Ototroid is a misnomer. Ototroid does not contain lymphaticus. D is the wrong option. To explain this MCQ, let us go to the circulation of blood through liver. Liver is supplied by the hepatic artery. Hepatic artery supplies 25% of blood but 75% of the oxygen because the blood in the hepatic artery is oxygenated. In contrast, portal vein supplies 75% of the blood but only 25% of the oxygen. It supplies blood which is rich in nutrients. In this flow chart, we can see the circulation of blood through liver. Blood flow to the liver comes from hepatic artery and portal vein. It reaches hepatic sinusitis. From there, it goes to central vein, which drains into hepatic veins. There are three hepatic veins, right, left, and middle. They drain into inferior vena cava, which in turn drains into the right atrium, as shown in this flow chart. Now, if you take the basic structural unit of the liver, it is a hepatic lobule which is hexagonal in shape and the central of this lobule is ventral vein at the periphery of hepatic lobule is portal triad in this diagram you will see only three structures within the portal triad but no lymphaticus but in fact beside these three structures there are all lymphaticus lymphaticus are also present in the portal triad that is why we say portotroid is a misnomer. It should have been portal tetrad. Now coming to the blood flow from portotroid to into the central vein. As already said, basic structural unit of liver is hepatic lobule. In the central of each hepatic lobule is central vein. Red radiating from the central vein are hepatic cords. As shown by this yellow double-headed arrow, each hepatic cord is about two cells thick. These hepatic cords are lined inside by endothelium and are called sinusitis. Blood coming from the portal triad, both by way of hepatic artery and portal vein, passes towards the central vein. Thus, we say blood flow in hepatic lobule is centripetal. So, blood flows from portal vein and hepatic artery towards the central vein. Inside the hepatic cordis, there is a canal which drains the bile secreted by hepatocytes. This bile flows towards the canaliculi located at the portal triad. Thus, we say bile flow in liver is centrifugal away from the central vein. Which of the following is not a content of interventricular sulcus? left anterior descending coronary artery, a branch from the left coronary artery, great cardiac vein, and small cardiac vein. Small cardiac vein is not content of anterior interventricular sulcus. To understand the anatomy of anterior interventricular sulcus, let us go to the sternocostal surface of the heart. Sternocostal surface of the heart is formed by right atrium, right auricle, right ventricle, and partly by the left ventricle. Right atrium and right ventricle are separated by anterior interventricular sulcus containing a right coronary artery and its branches. Between the right ventricle and left ventricle, on the surface we can see anterior interventricular 
sulcus or groove. This anterior interventricular sulcus contains left anterior descending coronary artery, which is a branch from left coronary artery. This vessel is commonly involved in atherosclerosis. It also contains great cardiac vein. It does not contain the small cardiac vein. Which of the following statements is false about triangle of cock? It is named after Walter Cock. True. It is located in right atrium. True. As a node is located in this triangle. Wrong. Tendon of Todaro forms it is boundary. True. To describe the cock triangle, let us open the right atrium. Triangle of cock present in the right atrium was described by Walter Cock. It is a triangular area which is bounded anterior by septal leaflet. Posterior boundary is formed by tendon of Todaro and Thebacian valve. This triangle is important in electrophysiology because it contains AV node, not SA node, which is located in relation with the superior vena cava and crista terminalis. Thank you for watching this video. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share this channel.